We're in the art studio at Mississippi College this week because we're talking about Mississippi art and artists. Our artists draw their inspiration from things they've experienced right here in Mississippi. Now, for instance, our first artist is Robin Whitfield, and she draws her inspiration while kayaking through a cypress swamp. My beginnings as, as an artist has to start just with my home life. For 35 years, my mother was an eighth grade art teacher. Since she had that perspective, a lot of our family vacations uh, revolved around going to art museums, or in particularly, what was so powerful to me was going to see Walter Anderson's home and work down in Ocean Springs. And of course, that was hugely powerful to me. I, I just grew up thinking that's what an artist was, since that's, who, that's the artist I saw the most about. Um, I just, I thought he represented artists. And so that meant being outside in nature, painting things you discovered and found, and being isolated and on adventures all the time. As an artist, I almost always paint on location. And occasionally I'll take a kayak. What I love about kayaking is I can access things that no one else can access. I can take myself away from where I might get interrupted by a person or a sound and completely lose myself in nature. So over the years, I have tried to come up with a system that is lightweight, waterproof, rugged, and that has turned into a watercolor system. So I've, I've gotten to where I don't even take an easel these days. I take paint and I take paper. So an interesting thing happened uh, about a decade ago when I was painting. And uh, I was out in my kayak. I was out in the middle of a, of a swampy area uh, working on a painting that I was kind of excited about. And some wind came along and, and picked up my paper and blew it face down in the water. Well, I, I, with a heavy heart, I reached down to grab it. And I just knew it was just going to be awful. And I picked it up. And sure enough, it was covered in this just brown stuff that was all over the water. And for a split second, I was a little disappointed. But I mean, I'm, I mean, pretty immediately, I, I almost took in my breath like, oh, oh my gosh. Because I, I, the color I was looking at, it, it was a pretty deep kind of translucent brown, almost a glowing orangey brown. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, that is the most beautiful color I've ever seen. And from that moment on, I, I started looking at the things around me in a new way. Because I, I, I mean, I've, I can't tell you how often I've, I've paddled through the swamp. I've gotten that brown, I guess some people call that swamp scum, but it's actually just plant oils. And that those plant oils uh, also allow pollen to stick and dust to stick and all the, all the interesting stuff in the water rises to the surface. And so it's almost even like a Petri dish. I mean, it's as interesting to me scientifically as it is artistically. So when I pull my paper through that water, I can look down and see bits of plants, little animals moving around, sometimes algae, just all kinds of stuff. It's very seasonal, different times of year, different sorts of things will be in a very thin layer across the paper. And it's different every single time, and I, it never gets old. Now, I don't really know all the chemistry going on. I'm really more interested in the magic. For a long time, I've, I thought my role as an artist was going to be like Walter Anderson. I was going to paint images of certain areas and inspire people to go to those places or maybe to save a place. Well, <laughs> I am so glad that life had other plans for me. What's happened over the past 15 years is I've fallen in love with a particular natural area. Chukchuma Swamp at Lee Tart Nature Preserve is less than a quarter of a mile from our uh, downtown square where my studio is located. So of course that means this is where I come the most and I come here almost every day. I first moved to Grenada in North Mississippi right out of college. I came here to paint murals. So when I wasn't painting murals, I just wandered around looking for a place to go. Well, I was living in our downtown at the time, and the closest natural area I could find was this big swamp. It was right over the river from our downtown. 
Well, this became my place. It became the place I came and began to really learn uh, about nature. Because like I was saying, I, I, I knew I loved nature all of my life, but I had not had an opportunity to spend a lot of time in one particular place. And I, I could not wait to get here every day. And it became the place I learned to watercolor. It became why I wanted to watercolor. It became where I put my first kayak into this swamp. Our city decided they wanted to do a citywide timber harvest on all their properties, the swamp being one of them. That's when the true conservationist in me came out, which I did not even truly realize was there at the extent that it was. Because I was not going to allow this place to be cut, or at least was gonna give it my best shot in saving it. Because I thought to myself, if I can't save the one place I love in my backyard, then what can I save? This swamp happens to be in our downtown area, and everyone loves our downtown, and everyone loves this city. So I began to connect it to our downtown swamp, and the group of people who I had uh, also helping me, I think they were more connected to downtown than they were to the swamp, so that was very helpful. And when I approached the council and uh, approached them in a, in a way to have them see the place that they were gonna cut is a place that they actually cared about, I don't think they had even noticed the swamp before. I began to just try to show them what it was they were going to cut and what they might lose and what they might lose for our community if they left this big hole in our downtown. Of course, I talked to them a little bit about the birds and the trees they might lose, but more importantly, I talked to them about the opportunities they would lose to connect people to a downtown swamp. I mean, who has a downtown swamp? They gave me an opportunity to bid on the trees, and they gave me some time to gather money, and I had this idea to sell the trees for their timber value. So I decided if trees were worth about 40 to $100, like most of the trees out here were, I felt like I could get most people to maybe adopt a tree, and I began to sell trees with the city's permission. And of course, they were simultaneously trying to bid off the trees too to real loggers. But in the end, uh, we had sort of a miracle happen. We had a, a philanthropist come up. And so he loaned us all the money to buy all the trees and we were the high bidder. So at that point, the city leased us the 300 acres and the man who loaned us the money requested that we name it a Lee Tart Nature Preserve. Everything is connected. The people coming here, they're loving it, them taking it back, talking about it, the way it spreads out into the world, every single thing is connected from the smallest microorganism here to the big groups of people that come here on our days when we do tours to just where it sits in our downtown. Every single thing is connected and everything that has happened here or will happen here is because of those connections. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads.